Moving on from our discussion about aphids and aphid identification and aphid treatments, we're going to look at white flies. And these are probably the second most common greenhouse pest that you might come across in your growing environment. Similarly to aphids, white flies are sap feeding insects. They are common on fruiting plants and bushy plants such as tomatoes. Typically, white flies are found in very dense communities that feed together on your plants, and so if you disturb the plants in your aquaponic system and you see a large cloud of white flies coming off of those plants, they're white flies, very appropriately named. This community feeding that white flies engage in releases toxic saliva into the plant tissue, and this can cause a loss of turgor pressure in the plants. Similarly to aphids, the presence of white flies can be noted by a sticky honeydew on the bottom of plant leaves. Just so that we get a scale of white flies and understand how small white flies are, here's a picture of a single white fly on the bottom of a basil leaf. Here's another picture of two white flies sitting on the small leaflet of a tomato leaf. Notice the small white powdery appearance around the actual white flies. This is a very big indicator that what you're dealing with is a white fly infestation, and sometimes you might see that white powdery appearance on your leaves even if you don't see the white fly itself. White flies have very slender bodies that are often green or yellow. Additionally, they have long white wings, and the wing shape varies by species. White flies have six small legs and two antennae. In looking at various signs or indicators of white flies, we see here a couple of pictures of white fly larva on a tomato leaf. And it's very common for people when they start working in a growing environment and they just start learning about how to identify different pests that they confuse white fly larva with aphids. They both have this very small oval yellowish appearance, but under closer examination, you really notice that these are white fly larvae, and they're not actually aphids. They don't have the large round bodies, they don't have the legs, they don't have the antenna, they don't have the cauda sticking off the back or the cornicles. So in using your abilities to identify aphids, you can arrive at the conclusion that these are not aphids, and you're looking at something else. And these here are white fly larvae. White fly larvae typically appear on the underside of plant leaves. So when you're inspecting your plants for pest problems, you really want to make sure that you're turning over the leaves on your plants and inspecting the undersides of those leaves. Most greenhouse pests reside on the underside of plant leaves. Additionally, when we're spraying for pests in a greenhouse environment, we want to remember that coverage is key. And so when we're spraying, we want to turn the plant leaves over and ensure that we're properly covering the bottom sides of our plant leaves with the sprays that we're using. Another very common, very visible sign of white flies that can let you know that you have a white fly problem in your greenhouse, even if you don't necessarily see the white flies themselves, is the presence of egg rings. Typically, white flies, when they lay eggs, position their head in the front of their body in a fixed location, and then pivot their body around that point as they deposit their eggs. And this leads to the formation of semicircles or full circles of eggs on your plant leaves. Some of the biggest problems that white flies cause in a growing environment are actually secondary problems that arise from their feeding habits. As an example, we see here an aggressive mildew infection of a tomato plant. Additionally, white fly feeding can introduce a number of pathogens and fungal infections and bacterial infections directly into the plant tissue.
in looking at biological control of white flies and beneficial insects that we would typically use in order to combat white flies, the go to is often Encarcia formosa. These are small, parasitic wasps that prey on white fly larvae. Similarly to how aphidious wasps attack aphids, adult Encarcia wasps lay eggs inside of the nymph and pupa stages of its hosts. Parasitized larvae turn black, and this is a critical indicator for integrated pest management responses to white flies. Here we see some photos of white fly larvae that are both healthy and parasitized. So the healthy white fly larvae appear yellow or green, while the parasitized larvae appear black. And the ratio of healthy to parasitized larvae allows us to make informed decisions about when to spray and when to allow our Encarcia formosa populations to do their job and manage our white fly population on their own. This is similarly to how we identify parasitized aphids versus healthy aphids and utilize that information to determine when we're going to spray and when we're not going to spray and how exactly we're going to progress with managing problems such as aphid infestations or white flies in our greenhouse.